Well, tonight we have a special guest, and Brother Tom Little is here, and he is an Aussie. He's from Australia, and the Lord saved him 24 years ago. He has a background in media and worked for MSNBC there on the digital news station. He's now working for a corporation, American corporation, even though he lives in, in Sydney, Australia, and attends the Metropolitan Baptist Church there. His company is owned by a company in, in Chicago here. Had a chance to meet him a few years back, and he has a big dream and a great goal to do what he can for world evangelism. And uh, I'm very thankful to have him. He has a, his wife, and they have three girls, two twin girls that are 17, and uh, one daughter who's 11. And they serve the Lord in Australia, but he has a heart for the whole world. And I heard about his story, and I heard about his, his, his desire, and I want him to take a few moments tonight and share that with us as a church family. I want you to first of all look on the screens, and there's a quick introduction video, and then he'll come and explain a little bit more what God has laid on his heart to do, and we'll get excited about that, and even take our offering tonight for this cause this evening. I'm looking forward to it. So give attention to the screens if you would. Harvest will be more than a magazine. It's actually a tool for worldwide evangelism. It will mean that you can lead people to Christ in the field just by using your phone. So little time, the harvest will be over. I reap down. It's a daily app on your phone. It will bring you news from the field. It will bring you the very latest prayer requests. It will uh, have a payment engine so that you can give to missionaries straight away if you, if you read of a need. It will provide you a daily devotional so that men and women in the morning will have a devotional they can set up their day with. Today we reap or miss our golden harvest. So let's say there's a typhoon in Manila. Someone can immediately click and give some money towards it. $20, $50 or more. Straight away on the phone. Some dear ones from the Harvest Magazine will start off on the phone because that's what everyone's got. It can reach everybody on the planet in a couple of seconds. But later it will evolve into a print magazine and also a tablet magazine. I think Harvest is one of the most powerful tools that's ever been invented. Because in this day and age you can reach everyone on earth in a couple of seconds. You can give money, you can read the latest updates. It's not like last century where you had to wait for a prayer letter to arrive in the mail to be read out in the pulpit. This will give you an immediate snapshot of what's happening around the world. It'll get the next generation onto the field for Christ. I need your prayers. I need you to dig deep. Because the technology's here, it's in the palm of our hands. We can make great things happen, but it'll only happen with your help and your funding. Good evening. Hello and welcome. What you've just seen is a glimpse of the future. You know, Daniel wrote in Daniel 12:4 that people would run to and fro and knowledge would be increased. Do you know that the internet is the Gutenberg press of our day? And I believe that God has given us this technology for such a time as this. Amen. By using this technology, Harvest Magazine will inspire more of God's people to do more of God's work. So as I conclude, I'd just like to share with you briefly three key events in my life which have led up to this moment. But this is not just about me, it's also about you. You know, we usually define ourselves by what we do. <coughs> we say I'm a writer. I'm a plumber, I'm a businessman, I'm a teacher, whatever. But I think we ought to define ourselves by what God has done in our lives. My point is that our picture of ourselves might change dramatically if we do this. By looking back through his prism, we might suddenly find ourselves looking forward through God's lens and see what he wants of us from all the gifts and experience that he's given us. So I'd like to look very briefly at three key steps out of the many, many, many steps that led to this platform and this church tonight. The first event was obviously getting saved in 1991 by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was crucified and whom God raised from the dead. Even by him does this man stand before you whole. 
The second event was being picked up by God out of mainstream media in Australia and transported to Russia on a missionary trip in 1992. That gave me a heart for missions. I saw the power of the Holy Spirit to break down walls and open doors and set the captives free. The third event was coming to America in the 90s. I worked with MSNBC in Seattle on the Microsoft campus for two years at the very dawn of the internet and then came down to Hammond for pastor's school in 1996 to meet up with my friend Peter Morris who had earlier been on a missions trip to Kenya. He went to Kenya, I went to Russia. We both developed a heart for missions. On the last night of pastor's school, Peter and I responded to the call of God to surrender for Christian service, not knowing what that meant, to be honest. We stood on a stage behind Pastor Hiles in the old building as he yelled out something like, what are you going to do with your life? Chase money? Very impactful evening. Peter, as you know, is now a missionary to Kenya. Meanwhile, God has been preparing me for another task which, have come, which has come into sharp focus over the past three years. That task is a globally transformative missions publication. The technology has now matured to make a daily news feed from the field very viable, not just viable, but an imperative as we see the day approaching. It will be an exciting magazine, not because I know how to do exciting, and I do, <laughs> but because the work of God is exciting. There are stories of miracles still happening in the 21st century, just as they were in the first century. Why? How do I know this? Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I've spent much time and treasure to get this far in the past three years of planning and prototyping. My wife, Margie, has been very patient. We've not taken a holiday in the past three years. I won't tell you how much we've poured into the project to date, but I will give you some current prayer needs. We need about 100K to launch the phone app with all the technology infrastructure and all of the preparatory work. We we'll also need ongoing support from churches while we stand in the market and build our subscriber base. It takes some time to wait for people to subscribe and for word to get around. I hope you'll help me in that by, sh by spreading the word. But on my figures, with subscriptions of 50 cents a week or $13 for six months, we reach break even at 3,800 subscribers. Not many. That's the bottom line. The need is great, brethren. We need to lift up our eyes, see what's happening, as God tells us in John 4.35, and surrender to his will for our lives. Do you know that 200,000 people went to hell today? It'll be 60 million by the end of the year. This is a serious business we're in, brethren. Amen. It's a matter of eternal life or death for every person we meet. Missions is not a call. We don't get called to the mission field. It's a command. Go ye therefore, hand someone a tract, pray for missions, Amen. give to missions, do something, anything, just don't do nothing. And please join us to make Harvest Magazine a reality. It's time to redeem the time. Wow, isn't that something? I, I knew about several things, but I didn't know about the pastor school and standing behind there. And you've already had an impact, church family, and in, in the life of this man for him to even be here today. What a wonderful testimony. We'll give our offering a few minutes to this thing. I'd like to give a few minutes to pray specifically for it. You know, I believe with all my heart, and it takes four things to get the gospel to the world, and I think maybe more than that, but four can be summed up. Number one, it takes men, people to go. Number two, it takes materials. It takes a pulpit, a, a roof, 
takes a jeepney or a car or a bus or uh, benches to sit on. Usually just takes song books to look into. Takes materials, tracks to hand out. Takes men, takes materials, and takes money. And uh, that's something that every one of us, not a one of us, got saved without money. The bus you rode, the, the, the church you, you gathered in, the track that you were handed, all of that cost money. And then it takes media. We are living in a day in which media is a very powerful tool to get the gospel of Christ. And, of course, we just heard an example of that now. And I'm excited about participating in a few moments. We want to pray for Brother Little that God would prosper him and bless him in this way, especially uh, as he works with that and getting missionaries to the field, especially. I want